Hey guys, this is Srini and welcome back. In the last video, we looked at what principal components analysis uh, basically was at a very high level. And uh, we understood that principal component analysis can be used to reduce the dimensions or dimensionality reduction to collapse our features into maybe a handful of features that can be used for speeding up our machine learning training. I know that's a mouthful, but let's get into uh, the code and understand this a bit better. Okay, so this is basically a quick explanation of how PCA can be used to speed up your uh, training for machine learning using uh, using tabular data, yeah, uh, like you see on the screen here. Okay, so the data that we are going to use is a breast cancer data set. And again, uh, I'll provide the code here. I'll also leave the link uh, down in the description. But you probably are familiar with this data set if you have watched my previous videos. So let's go ahead and right now I'm running this code without any PCA. So you get an idea of what this is doing. I'll do that very quickly and then let's see how PCA can help. Uh, so all we are trying to do here is uh, basically read the data set and then uh, let's go ahead and do this. Read the data set and uh, looking for any null data. This is pretty common, right? So our data set has so many parameters, 30 of these. Yeah, it has uh, radius, texture, area, and a whole bunch of other things, 30 of these, 31 rows, the extra one row uh, that's, uh, uh, I mean, I'm transposing, that's why it's saying 31 rows, but we have like total 32 of these and we have uh, ID and diagnosis. Everything else are features, okay? ID we can drop, it's just an ID of whatever the tumor and diagnosis is the result, label. Is it malignant or benign, okay? So that's what we have and I'm gonna rename the diagnosis into label because as you can tell, I'm not good at saying diagnosis. I like to say label, okay? So there you go, I'm relabeling uh, re my diagnosis to label and now if you look at the uh, label, now I have 357 benigns and 212 malignants. Not a balanced data set, but good enough for us. And I'm going to define my why. Again, I'm not explaining every bit of this because this video is not about explaining how to perform binary classification. I have already done that using this exact data set, so please watch that video. So uh, now I'm defining my X, X train and X test from this data set. So, so far all we did is uh, split our data, 569 data points into 143 testing and 426 training data sets. Now, let's go ahead and train our neural network. Well, it's just basically a simple dense layer with some dropout, 20%, and then output layer. And uh, we are using Adam and tracking accuracy as metrics. Again, let's go ahead and print the summary so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So there is a dense layer with 496 trainable parameters and there is one uh, layer right there with 17 and that's pretty much it. Not, not, not a complicated uh, model right there. Uh, I'm importing the time start and end time so we can keep a track of how long does it take to train here and how long does it take to train on PCA. This is going to be a couple of seconds, if at all, one and a half second to two seconds, uh, because it's a small data set, but it proves the point of how PCA can really help, okay? Um, did we run this? No. So let's go ahead and run these lines and uh, execute this. So it should be a few seconds, like you'll see on the screen. There you go, 100, 2.6 seconds, total execution time. Okay, let's see how long the other one takes. Probably 2.4 seconds, I don't know, we'll see. Um, how well is the model performing? This should be pretty accurate. Uh, it's 98.6%, extremely good, and we can skip all the other stuff. This is just uh, stuff that's not relevant for this video. Okay, so this is how you typically do your binary classification or any classification machine learning training, right? So now let's look at how PCA can be implemented to minimize the number of features, you see? Again, what we are trying to do is we have 30 features, let's bring it down to five features. Uh, by containing as much information as possible uh, from these 30 features. That's the whole point here, okay? So for that, let us go ahead and remove all of these and in fact the only thing i would like to keep let's do this let's open snipping tool and let us copy this part 
total execution time and accuracy. So we can compare, okay? Let's move this or minimize this for now. Okay, so, and let's start from scratch, clear the screen. Okay. I like, I, I get very, very frustrated when I see too much clutter. Okay, so now let's do the same with PCA. So all we are trying to do is again, exactly the same way we do our data set, right? I mean, we are kind of, you see exactly the same data set, same numbers here and uh, same X and uh, uh, Y values. So until this point, it's exactly the same. You see that we have 569 uh, data points and 30 columns, 30 features. How do we implement PCA? First of all, uh, I think there is another place where you can import PCA like from one of the standard libraries. I like the one from scikit-learn.decomposition, import PCA. Let's go ahead and import the principal component analysis right there. And now, uh, this is a cool thing uh, to do. How many components do we want to bring it down to? You have 30 features, but can I do top two principal components? Can I do top five, top 10? What, what, is, uh, what is the right number? To do that, let's actually take the maximum number of components, which is 30 in this case. By the way, with PCA, you can break it down into the maximum, whatever the minimum of these two is, either 569 or 30. In this example, I can only do 30, right? So let's go from zero to 30, and then let's actually uh, fit this, okay? Uh, fit our X to this principal component, okay? And plot the amount of information that's actually contained within the top, uh, uh, you know, within whatever the number of principal component uh, components we are extracting. In other words, I know that can be a confusing statement. In other words, if I select only one principal component, how much information does it contain of all the 30, uh, you know, features that we have? So of all the data, if we pick two principal components, how much information does it contain? So let us plot the variance. All I'm trying to do is variance and plotting the variance, which in a way, think of it as amount of information contained uh, uh, in this principal component compared to the original data set, okay? So let's run all of these and have a quick look at the plot, and it should look something like this. And you can see, uh, if I put all 30, right? If I decompose this into 30, then I'll have 100% of information contained in the 30, but we're not doing much there. If I look at five, if I look at the top five, top five contains about 85% of the total information. You see, that's contained in the original data. So I'm okay with five principal components. Although I'll be losing 15%, about 15%, right? Information, I should be comfortable with that. If not, I'll pick 10. 10 would be 90 plus percent. So it's up to you as uh, a user developer to kind of pick what value makes sense for your case. So based on that, let's go ahead and pick five principal components, okay? So now I'm actually breaking the, uh, you know, breaking this down into these many components. So now let's pick five principal components and how do you start, initiate your principal component? I'm assigning a variable called PCA and importing this PCA right there and number of components is basically five, okay? So that's what we are trying to do here. And uh, do I have my PCA right there? There you go. So it's the object is created, right? So all we did is create an object here. Now we need to fit this object to data. So we are doing fit transform method right there and fitting it onto our X data. What is our X data? It has 569 rows and 30 columns. That's what this is. So let's go ahead and fit this and we should see five rows now. Oh, sorry, five columns. So here it is, my principal components. If I open all that data, is contained in one, two, three, four, five columns right now. By the way, these values mean nothing. These are all eigenvalues. So they mean nothing when it comes to actually your original data. If your original radius is five microns, 20 microns, whatever that is, this has nothing to do with that. This is basically the principal components containing whatever the information and these are various uh, uh, features uh, that are captured as part of each data point. That's pretty much it. Okay, our principal components that are captured. So now this is our this is this is our feature. That's it. This is what goes into our neural network instead of 30 features. We reduce the dimensions from 30 to just five. Hopefully you're with me. Now let's actually create a data frame out of it. So from now on it's just data handling. Okay, so I'm not going to 
talk too much. By the way, you can get your original data back by doing inverse transform. Okay, I just did PCA.fit transform. You can do inverse transform. I just included this because I know I'll be distributing the code so you, you don't end up Google searching for how to get it back, okay? So now let's uh, go ahead and capture this information as a data frame. All I'm trying to do is basically uh, assigning column names, PC1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now I have a data frame that I can use uh, for my for my uh, you know training. Now you can also look at the amount of variance. Uh, all you we already did that here. Explained variance ratio, right? So all I'm trying to do here is uh, basically printing explained variance ratio except in this case our PCA has only one value which is five okay that's what I'm printing right there so my first component has 44 percent of the information second component has about 19 percent of information third as you see it keeps decreasing and when you go further and further they don't add much to the information but they do add something okay so, and if you want to see how much information is lost, all I'm doing is adding all of these in one minus that, that's pretty much it, which is 15%, right? 15.26%, which was evident from this graph anyway. If I pick five, 85% of the information is contained. So the remaining 15% is lost. So far, so good, I hope. Okay, my final data frame is I'm going to concatenate this with my labels. So I have one grand data frame that I am ready to feed into my uh, neural network, which is, uh, where is my final data frame? There you go. So I should have my five columns and the last column label is just my label, malignant or benign, all set. Now we are pretty much set to uh, one fun exercise. <laughs> if you want to see plot principal component one and two, for these data points uh, that are labeled malignant and benign. Again, I'm, this is not necessary. I'm adding this code, which may make this look into more intimidating than it is, but this is just informative. So now let's go ahead and plot this. And uh, let's look at the plot. And what did I do? Red for malignant and green for benign. So all I'm doing is just plotting principal component one, all the values, principal component, all the values, uh, for principal component two, for each of these, uh, malignant and benign. Now you can see how nicely these two are separated. I can almost draw a straight line right around here. In fact, if I plot this in 3D, I'm pretty sure I can put a plane right around there that kind of separate these two easily. So you can see right away how principal components are taking the top two are defining uh, you know, uh, uh, these, these components or features where the separation is already easy for our neural network or any, any, it doesn't matter if you are using neural network or random forest or support vector machines or anything. It doesn't matter at this point. Uh, I mean, you can use your favorite one. PCA doesn't care. It's just uh, uh, reducing your dimensions. Okay, so after that, let's go ahead and define our X. I called it final X. I dropped the label and our Y, okay? So this is our X and Y that goes into our uh, neural network. Obviously, the other steps that we did from before, you need to encode the labels because you cannot just put M and B into neural network. We convert that into M equals to one and benign equals to zero. So that's what we are doing. Now we do our final split of training and testing, just like we did the last time. There you go. Our model, exactly the same model. We are not doing any different, anything different. And let us run all of these to see how long it actually takes. I think I'm doing 100 epochs, right? Yep, 100 epochs. And probably we didn't even save much time. So I don't know if the entire exercise is worth talking about. But there you go, 96.5% accuracy. Now let me bring this back. So you can see previously it took 98.601. Now it took, uh, now it took how much, uh, sorry two minutes, 62 milliseconds or so, uh, sorry, two seconds, 62 milliseconds. Now it's actually slower. Uh, the entire video is useless because it's not doing what I'm, I want it to do. Maybe if I run it again, it'll do a bit faster. This is not much data, believe me. If you have a lot of data, this will be quantifiable, significant difference. So now that you understand this, one final time, let's do this. It also depends on how much of my system is uh, occupied uh, because I have, uh, a video recording and all that. So this is not a good data to ex you know use it, but at least you now you know what PCA is. Okay, 2.6465 or something, 99.3% accuracy, that's good. And with PCA, uh, let's see, 
2.61. So now it's faster. I mean, if we do it right away, you can compare it, right? 2.64 versus 2.61. You may say, who cares about few milliseconds? Well, you do care about it if you're doing uh, training over two days, three days, two months, depending on your data set. This does make a huge difference when you do that. Although, keep an eye that now you're compromising your accuracy because you don't have all the data represented here. So in the next tutorial, let's actually see how this exact same thing can be done for image classification now where we have some images and not just a bunch of columns, okay? So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And again, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you get notified when my next video gets uploaded. Thank you.